Welcome again to the VIP lounge at the Alpha Hotel in Sydney. We're just across the road from Sydney Dragway where the AC Delco uh, East Coast Thunder gets underway very, very shortly. With me is uh, Jared McLean. We're talking pro alcohol today with Monique and uh, Rob Ambrosi. But uh, I have to say, Jared, top alcohol, pro alcohol, call it what you like. I mean, it's just been another standout for 400 Thunder. Yeah, Rob, the top alcohol series, it's been incredible. Dominated by Gary Phillips for so many years, one of the most winningest drivers in Australian drag racing history. But there's some big changes afoot in, uh, in pro alcohol. Yeah, that's right, J-Mac. I mean, season 2017-2018 is, is going to have uh, an interesting mix with some more competitors on the fringes at the moment. But to talk everything uh, pro hockey, I mean, welcome to Rob and Monique. Rob, the Osfield team, I mean, Osfield Performance uh, Oils, They've been backing you for a while, and you're known as one of the most enthusiastic teams on the whole circuit. Love the sport. I just love the sport. The thing is, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm doing the job that I love doing. Um, I've got my family involved. My uh, youngest daughter is involved in it as well, and she'll probably end up um, uh, climbing the ranks and, and, and running a, uh, our second car, which we have, um, you know, hopefully within, within a couple of years to come. Well, you mentioned there it is a family sport. Yeah. Monique, I mean... Uh, I imagine you've grown up with uh, methanol sort of floating around the fumes of the house. Yes, I have. Since a young age, I've been in love with the sport as, as well as my sister. Become more hands-on at the age of about 13 when I could start undoing the valve covers and take the spark plugs out. But yeah, I've moved forward now, which is really exciting. And you're very active uh, with the social media side of promoting the, the team and the sport and the sponsors. Um, that's pretty important today, isn't it? Yeah, it is 100%. We use Facebook as well as a major way to create a bigger fan base. I do all our promotional work and digital media, posters, shirts, any way that we can promote our sponsors and interact with our fans in a better way. And of course, you're not just there at the keyboard. Um, if we have a look at your hands, you are hands-on. There's no long nails with polish on those. Uh, what's your job on race day with the engine? Well, we all work as a team, but I focus on the bottom end. I work with one of my crew members, Steph, so we do that together. But um, delegation has become one of the major things that I've moved forward to. So as we work as a team, as I said, assistant crew chief, I make sure everything's being done in the car finalised and double checked many times over so we're not getting to the start line and wondering what we've done wrong. Rob, racing as a family, I mean, what's this involved when you go on the road? Oh, the going on the road is a holiday for me. Wouldn't it? Every time we, uh, we get ready to go to a race meeting, which we try to be ready early because I hate being ready late, we, uh, we look forward to the truck trip. The truck trip ends up being my, myself, my daughter and one of our crew guys, Sean, when he comes on. Um, and we just, we make a holiday for, of it. And the thing is, we, just, we look forward to it so much that every time we, we actually do it, that's a, a limelight of it as well. It's not just the racing as well. It's getting in that truck and visiting different places, uh, meeting different people on the road. It, it is good. It is really good. So most people go camping in national parks or things, and you go camping in the pits yeah. of uh, drag strips? We go camping in our Kenworth that we all built up all ourselves and the, and, um, and the trailer. Yeah, we, that's, that's pretty much our life. Uh, the, the, the family aspect of it, you know, I mean, how much of a focus within the family unit is the sport and the business? Uh, our, look, our business revolves around the racing. So... Um, we have a shop in, in Melbourne, in Camberfield, which we do a lot of fabricating work, uh, welding, we have a service department, an engine shop as well. Um, with the racing, we include that in, in that business as well, which is an advertising tool for us. People know what we do. Um, and look, it, it takes up a lot of time. Uh, your life revolves around the racing more than anything because at the end of the day, you've got to work out birthday parties or weddings or Things that come in front of you, like holidays and stuff like that, and you've got to sort of revolve it around the racing before anything else. The amount of work in preparing these cars is, is enormous. I, I know we've got some great footage of uh, the preparation that the, the team goes through. Yes. Um, the commitment from a, a financial point of view as well must be extreme. It's huge. Uh, and if it wasn't for Osfield, 
uh, Mad Brothers, CTS, Custom Cam, CRD. Uh, we would, we would uh, be struggling. We have got good stuff on board to go very, very fast. And, um, but we're at a point where we're still learning a lot of different things because the, the thing is with these cars here, it's not just like, oh, let's put a tune up in there and go down the track and you're gonna run a number. It doesn't work like that. You've got to have everything right to have it done and you need the backing. And then don't get me wrong, it still costs me a lot of money to do it as well and time. It, it takes up a lot of time. Well, J-Mac, these guys, of course, are one of the most popular uh, teams when they get out on the track and their record's been pretty good. We had an absolutely incredible field at the Winter Nationals recently. Alcohol was absolutely booming. This event here in Sydney, the AC Delco East Coast Thunder Round, we have five cars. Not ideal, but you guys are still going to put on a show. We've got Cam and Bessie, Russell Mills, Stephen Reid, Mark Rowland, and of course yourself in the Osfield Funny Car. Is it going to stay like this, or can we look forward to a return to form? Look, I, I, I'm not even worried about the amount of people that are here this weekend to race. Um, I don't think that's a problem at all. The, our, our sport is big, and if you have a look at last year, there was a lot of people in the field. There's some new faces coming in, which is great. Um, but it's, it's nothing to worry about. It, it'll be okay. And of course, uh, having more cars means you guys get something to bounce off of. You guys yeah. have something to, to sort of promote yourselves with, and that's got to factor in in a huge way with you, Monique, because you've got something to, to sort of play off. Yeah, 100%. It, um, it surely does keep the sport alive, and it demonstrates all the future, well, famous future drivers that may be up and coming, especially like Dad said, we have a couple of new drivers that are entering the sport. Not too worried about the lack of um, drivers that are here this weekend because as through the Winter Nationals did have a lot of damage, but they will be back and the, fo the field will grow a lot more. Now, Rob, engines in alcohol. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is quite significant in that the pro slammers have, uh, uh, the race is voted and the organisation agreed. They're letting in the new engines, 4.9 uh, centres. Quite technical, but the bottom line is to change engines is a pretty expensive deal because everything you've got is obsolete. The Pro Elkies are sticking with these. I mean, you guys are running 540s, 550s. Yeah. Um, good decision? Look, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a touch, it's a very touchy subject, that is. Uh, Noonan's have done a fantastic job in developing this engine. Um, I don't say that it's a bad thing. The, the problem we have, and say I'm talking about myself and other teams as well, is that we've invested so much money in a particular engine that we all use, and the NHRA in alcohol use the same motor. They don't run anything different. We've invested so much money in that, and um, to actually go to a newer engine, what we have, we're virtually just can't use that's it you can't use none of those parts on that new motor now it's a big investment and and the the funding for that sponsorship wise and all that it's there but it's not there not to change over just mm -hmm. like that maybe you know look maybe in the near future if people voted in and stuff like that you can at least prepare yourself for it but to actually go to that straight away it, it will be a, a disadvantage to some people because that motor obviously makes more power. It's a different engine. Um, I, I would like it to stick to the uh, NHRA type rules where they keep that particular motor, this blower, this overdrive, and, and go on from there. Looking at the Pro Slammer category as a whole, yep. could there be an upside? Could the fact that these Pro Slammer guys have got engines that are now virtually obsolete for them, Yeah. They'll be sold down the line, so maybe we could see some guys out of Competition Eliminator or even Supercharge Outlaws stepping up with that equipment into Pro Slammer. Well, you, you see a lot of those guys in Supercharge Outlaws um, have got those motors, but the problem is what those motors are worth. That investment for, say, three or four engines, you'll spend half a million dollars doing that, right? The problem is uh, you're virtually going to give more. There'll be that many motors for sale, they'll be worth nothing. That's, well, that's the problem. Well, that, that's, that's not good for the people selling them, but no, it could be right. great for the other class. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic also for people wanting to make that step. Yeah. I think it's, it's let's yeah. stop looking for the silver lining and start looking at some hard figures, Rob. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, the fact is, I refer to it, these engines, these combinations, the same as NHRA, we're seeing 540. Uh, 
you, know, you qualified, I think, with a 557 at the Winter Nationals. Yeah. Um, we're pumped up and looking forward to round one of eliminations that never happened because of the weather. Yeah. This weekend, um, I mean, the conditions, we don't know yet. What, what are your predictions for this weekend? A, on performance levels, and B, what's the chances of one of those gold Christmas trees? No rain, no rain to start off with. And, and the Christmas tree, gold or silver for me, I'm, I'm happy just to make it that far in this class. And it doesn't matter who's in the class, everyone's got a fighting chance to win because everyone is fast. The new guys and, and the older guys that have been in it. But it's a tough sport, right? And the thing is for me, if I can make it to the finals, that's, I've already won in my eyes, in my daughter's eyes, and, and my family and my whole crew. I just, just want to get there and with, that, with very minimal damage. <laughs> well, Monique, I'm sure that's a Facebook post that you'll be loving to put up if it, come, if it comes true on Saturday. I would. We have a lot of support from our fans on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And it'd be really, really great to have a good weekend as we've struggled in the past seasons. But hopefully we can get there. Well, we're going to have you guys back uh, after the event to talk in the next show on what went uh, yeah. on and recap everything. And uh, Jared, I mean, it's going to be a huge couple of days at the racetrack, isn't it? It's going to be absolutely incredible. The AC Delco East Coast Thunder Round right here at Sydney Dragway is going to be phenomenal. Make sure you do come on down, down the track. We'll be hosting a driver signing session. So come and grab an autograph and get yourself a selfie with some of your stars. Maybe grab Monique and Rob here. I know which one I'd be preferring. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here on Down the Track. And from Rob and myself... We'll catch you soon.